Hello friends, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Kathy Rhodes and I have my wonderful, handsome husband, John, with me today. Hello, how are you? <laughs> you know, friends, there are learning lessons all around us. And sometimes things happen that just wow ya. They wow me, and that's exactly what happened today. To the point that while I was talking to John, I said, uh, you're recording the podcast this week <laughs> with me because this is so good. Yes. So, okay, just to stage it a little bit here and give you a little history. If you haven't been watching any of our recent videos, we just came off a of vacation. We took an upper Wisconsin vacation, but it started with a race. Yes, a race that we prepared for about five months on. Right, right. So my son and I ran a 5K in Door County, and John and our daughter Cassandra ran a half marathon. That's 13.1. 13.1 miles and it took about how many how many minutes well i'd love to tell you i got it under two but no i didn't um it was two hours about two hours and 17 minutes they're rock stars they're rock stars but through this whole journey so since <laughs> january uh they've been they've been preparing for this race yeah. and there's been a lot of lessons through the whole journey so Go. Start sharing with us. <laughs> no pressure. All that you've been learning. So in this event, I've never trained. I've been a two-sport college athlete, and I've never trained for anything as hard and as intense as this. And it was just a half marathon. Just. Well, ah! you know, people ah! run marathons all the time. They do Ironman Whatever. Events. I did 3.2 miles. Just a half marathon yeah. is over 10 miles more. It, it was a lot of work. Um, and, and I'm a seasoned person, meaning I'm, I'm of a particular age. So it was, it, was, it, was, it was a struggle. You're highly mature. But I'll tell you what, the event that led up to the race, I wouldn't change a thing. And I worked hard, but I wouldn't change a thing because I learned so much during this process, during this journey. Okay, how many learning lessons are you going to share with us? Uh, about three, three or four. Okay. Three. All right. All right, so What's the first learning lesson number one. The first one, and, and this isn't going to blow anyone's mind, this is really simple. Listen to your body. Uh. Now, we all know that, duh, but when you're running and you feel a twinge, don't let ego get in the way and say, no, I have 50 more minutes or I have. When your body tells you something's not right, shut it down. So do you have any examples? Like, I mean, like today, for example, I was, we went out running today and toward the end of my run, now mind you, it was a five mile run and I was tired and I felt something in the side of my knee, but it wasn't consistent. And I knew I was, because I was tired, I may, may be running wrong. So yeah. I better focus on my feet and my ankles. And so, so give me an example of that. I mean, my, my knee is fine. My right. knee is fine. So for me to stop at that point, no, no. What do you mean pay attention to your body? All right, so if, if I'm running, I actually would, I always listen to music. I, I don't think about a lot of stuff. I just like zoning in on music. I'll start off, or if I start to feel like, like a pain somewhere, I'll turn my music off and I'll listen to my feet. Because if I'm sliding my feet, it's no wonder that my hips start to hurt a little bit. And so in my mind, I'm thinking heel to toe, heel to toe. When you're running up a hill, it's balls of your feet. And so just by listening to little things mm -hmm. like that, if you're running and you start off and your legs, you, you feel like you're in molasses and your body is heavy, that's lactic acid building up in your body, which means you gotta breathe better, um, you need some sugar. You need some glucose. Wow, that's great. Hold on, that's crazy. I preach and teach how we need to go without sugar, and you just said, what? Oh, well, this is going to be my second one, but I could go on about listening to your body, but a little caveat here. My, my second learning lesson I wanted to share, and this blows me away and will really challenge Kathy's paradigm, is sugar is good. Sugar is good. Okay, time out. Let's go back to learning <laughs> lesson number one. Let's finish that, and okay. then, we'll, then we'll continue to be mind blown. So yeah, listening to your body. When you feel something or it doesn't sound right, um, shut it down. Stop, because mm. you're actually going to put yourself a, a lot farther behind if you try to man your way through it. Mm. Uh, 
it is, it, is, it is crazy, and we could get into more and more on that part. You know, there's something, I don't know if it was uh, when I was younger, you know, if I had teachers were drilling something in my head or press through it, press through it, come on, keep pushing, keep pushing. So there's a fine balance is what I hear you saying is, yeah, we need to get over the fact that this was a 13.1 mile run, mm. but yeah, we, we don't need to be crazy or egotistical and injure ourselves right. because we were not listening to what our body was trying to scream at us. Yeah, and, and if my toes are hurting, it's because um, my, sh my toes are hitting the end of my shoe. And so I will push my toes back, my heel back into my shoe because if it's if it's hurting at five miles after ten, mm. you're going to be in trouble. So, listen to your body. Listen mm. to clues. This is the le leadership lesson I wanted to share on this segment: is listen to your body when you're running, but listen to the clues. Listen to what people are saying. Listen to what you're saying, and pay attention to the small things, because the small things at two miles can be huge things mm. at thirteen. The small things in leadership can be a huge thing when you have to make a big decision or when you have something going on with our culture or That's with good. the vision. So listen to the small things. Okay, okay. That's good. Let's go on to sugar. Yeah. If you've listened to any of my podcasts, come on. Seriously, if he listens to anything I say, sugar is not good. Sugar, uh, cancer likes sugar. Yeah. Uh, fat likes sugar. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, talk to us here. What, <laughs> what, what's going on with this sugar and running? So before I run, I take one of those liquid IVs and they're full of electrolytes. And right. I was talking to another person and they're like, this is so much better than the liquid IVs because it doesn't have as much sugar. And I looked at them and I'm like, but sugar isn't bad. I shouldn't say sugar is good for you. <laughs> sugar isn't bad for you if you're exerting a lot of energy. So okay. I take little packets with me. I run with a fanny pack. And when I'm going to run a long time, like two hours plus, I take what we call goo and it's GU. <laughs> And you're supposed to take it five minutes before and every 45 minutes they say, I usually take it every hour. And it literally looks like goo. It is, it, it is goo. You can get different flavors. I love the banana, strawberry one, but it, it is, it's goo. But you're not taking it because it tastes good. You're taking it because of the instant energy that it gives you. And the liquid IV, He's like, I don't like that. I like this because it doesn't have as much sugar. And I'm I, well, I need that sugar to start off with because you need to, to, to be able to um, be active when you start. For and your body. sugar provides that for you. So that's so interesting because when I go running, we go running right away in the morning. And today I ran five miles. I have water only. <laughs> There's nothing, there's no goo, there's no banana. Oh, I did that one day, that's awful. Back. Yeah, that's just awful. I do nothing because I don't like anything in my stomach. I don't like any yeah. taste in my mouth. But you're saying for a long something. distance. So I'm not saying if we're <laughs> if we're running a 5K, no offense. I mean, that's still three miles and that's awesome. Your body is going to be fine. But if you're running an extended period of time, we're talking two and a half hours I ran for training your body will start to shut down. You need something. So what, what happened the first time you took goo in the middle of your two hour run? I could feel, I could feel like it was literally like hitting a wall. Before you took it. Before I took it. I could, I just, I started hating life. I might've been at maybe six, six or seven miles and I hit a wall. And so I reached in and took the goo and I actually stopped and I walked and I carry a water bottle with that liquid IV in it. So I took the goo and I drank the liquid IV and I started running again. And it, it did jolt me a little bit. Now, maybe that was psychological. <laughs> okay, maybe it was a placebo, I'll, I'll take that. But whatever happened, it, it carried me and I ended up finishing stronger mm. than the way I felt when I started. Even with a little walk. With a little walk, yes. Interesting. Yeah. So, so this liquid IV is uh, like a powder that you put in your water bottle. 
uh, the goo. I mean, we got it all on Amazon, but I got I to gotta put a plug into that liquid IV. I, when I was younger in high school, whatever, I mean, we never carried water bottles with us anywhere. And I would get headaches a lot. When we were shopping, I'd get headaches. At school, I'd get headaches. I think it was really, I was dehydrated. Because I'm also extremely motion sickness. So we go driving and I'm not feeling good. This liquid IV has been one of the only things besides Culver's or McDonald's french fries, <laughs> which isn't good for you, but, but I knew it was the salt. And sure enough, this liquid IV, one time I took it on the way, it was a three hour drive and I could feel it about an hour in, I could just feel this uh, motion sickness starting to happen. I, I filled my water bottle with water and my liquid IV and within 10 minutes, I was not dehydrated anymore. Water alone doesn't fully hydrate you. I was missing electrolytes, sodium being one of them. Mm. And I know there's sodium, magnesium, and potassium are the three power electrolytes that need to refuel. So it is quite amazing that when your body is lacking something, listen to your body. Listen to your body. And and sugar might be one of those things that that gets you gets you going again. Uh, yeah. So you know that isn't always logical and it's not always what we've been taught for so long but for the race or for the running an extended run right extended run it's <coughs> Excuse very me. necessary and and when you're running there's there's uh, volunteers that are handing you drinks water is always good but i know i need my electrolytes so i go for the gatorade or the powerade or whatever it is i don't drink the water to get me remember you're in survival mode right, right. you're just trying to finish so it's Gatorade, okay. constantly. Yeah. Okay. So tell a fun goo story real quick. When you're actually running the race, you had goo in your fanny pack, right? Yeah. And you, you went through it. So you talk about the ups and downs. You start off and it usually takes about three miles, three or four miles to kind of get in a groove, to get your pace. But then you hit a wall. Invariably, you're gonna hit a wall. And my wall was hit right around eight miles. Like an energy wall. In, in a mindset. It's like, oh my gosh, I hate life right now because <laughs> I still have five more miles at, at mile eight. Oh, wow. It's just, this, this, this stinks. It, I didn't love life. And so I reached into my fanny pack. Now, so we're about an hour and a half into our race by now. And uh, probably not that much. But anyway, I reach in as I'm running. I was reaching in and I didn't have any goo. So when you hit this, because uh, you, you already had a few goo. I did. I did. Two goo in you. But it was you, just needed, survival mode. When you needed that third goo. It yeah. Was the... So I started to panic a little bit because I unzipped uh, while you're running. I unzipped and I'm reaching down in there. I can't find it. And I thought, man, I know I packed three, but what happened? Maybe, maybe I dropped it or something like that. So I didn't get my goo. And I'm just being honest, probably too transparent. I also had some ibuprofen in my bag. I was looking for the ibuprofen. I had to do something because I was hurting. Ugh. Couldn't find anything. So it was just like, power through it. You wow. have no choice. You got to keep going. And so that's the down. And then about 10 miles, you get your second win. You still have a 5K left. You still have three point some miles to go. Yeah, it was... It was after 10, it wasn't that bad. But then we get back to, we were staying in a, in a campground in our RV and he was unpacking his fanny pack. <laughs> and there was the goo that was stuck off to the side. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Dang. But I think that's a, a subliminal <laughs> learning lesson as well, that sometimes you won't have the materials you need and you just gotta power through. You just gotta power through And it. you did, you yeah. did it. You had some physical pain in your hips and knees. You needed some sugar, some energy, but you still was able to finish it. Yeah, because wow. you had no choice. Okay, that's good. Okay, what's learning lesson number three? Okay, so as we're talking, I'm thinking about more and more and more, but I want to go to the main thing. We'll do another podcast later. <laughs> <laughs> let's, that's fair. let's get to the main. I want to get this, to the main. This was the, oh, wow, that's amazing yeah. type of lesson that he shared with me in the kitchen this morning. So we started off listening to our body, right? And in this, you know, I could go on and talk to you about uh, different levels of heart rate. You want to get your up and then go up a little bit more and level two and three and blah, blah, blah. But you're constantly challenging yourself on your mindset about running. And it was so intriguing. So I did a lot of studying, 
imagine that I ran my whole <laughs> life and now I'm finally learning about running. And some of the people who ran mini marathons said, start slow and then slow down from there. So start at a slow pace and then go one step slower when you're starting off. Okay, hold on. Don't you want to get a good time? Yes. Like a fast time? Yes. Then <laughs> this is this is crazy to me because it sounds so counterintuitive. It's a paradox. Yeah. Yeah, again, we've been taught things <laughs> you got to win the race. And right. And you got you All's well that begins well. Get out in front. Oh. And <laughs> in certain areas that's probably very true. But when you're running, you have adrenaline, you have the crowd, you have the loved one over there watching us, you have all the other runners, and you're fresh. So everything in you says go. Right. But the problem with that is, is that if you let the adrenaline take over, right. you're going to pay for it later. Wow, okay. And, 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 and so, not only that, start off slow and knock it down another notch so that you are in control, you're finding your pace, you're in, and it is somewhat busy when you're starting off and you're kind of weaving and other people are weaving. So you want to maintain a certain pace because this is why. If you start off slow, it can actually improve your time than if you started off fast. And here's the caveat that I also learned, ready? That when you're, don't, don't be egotistical <clears throat> that, that you will, don't wanna walk during it because oh. <clears throat> this can also speed up your time by walking and not continuously running. The person that I learned from said, when you're taking a drink of water or Gatorade at the thirst stations or whatever, walk during that time. That's the time you walk, take a drink, catch your breath, and then take off again. And they were absolutely right. My first half, there was a split. They call it a split, and that's how fast you did the first half. And I think that first half, I was at 1131, which is really kind of slow for me, my pace. The second half, because I started doing what I remembered I learned, 937. <gasps> Wow, you took like <clears throat> two minutes. I finished the race at 9.37 a mile. That's two minutes. He took off two minutes per mile on that last right, half. Right, right. Wow. And, wow. It, and, and here's why. I started slow and I walked during the thirst stations and I had the glucose and I had all this other stuff because then I became a learned runner. <laughs> I had to. And wow. it was, it was it, to the point where... I, the last three miles, I'm slapping the little kids that have their hands out. Um, I'm having fun with people who are pulling carts. I'm like, hey, can I get in the back of that cart? And just, just having a great time. So, and it was all because of that. Now, here's the leadership lesson. We think that the faster we go, the more we're gonna get accomplished. Okay, well, hold on. There are some people in this world who are just naturally a fast pace. They walk fast, talk fast, think fast. Everything yeah. about them is fast, 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 fast. fast. They, I mean, they don't even take time to breathe. <gasps> I can be <coughs> that way sometimes. I can too. Many times. So this is so interesting because there's times when I don't feel like I can slow down. But it could be to the detriment that it's taking you longer to get to your goal by sticking with that pace that we think is comfortable, that's normal to us. But if we take a pause, a pause in that, you know what? Go away from your workstation and grab some water. A sustained mental cognitive focus only lasts 45 minutes tops before you start to plummet a little bit, which means get away from the computer for a moment. Take them, go for a walk. So interesting. I just had this revelation tonight while I was talking awesome. to you. Awesome. On this exact same thing, and now I get it. So, 
we were, you know, having dinner, making dinner, prepping veggies, all that fun stuff. And I, my mind is always, it's like a calendar and it's always looking at the agenda. And I'm like, okay, honey, what do you got going on this week? Seven o'clock tomorrow morning, I have a meeting. Tomorrow night I'm doing this. Wednesday I'm doing this. Thursday so and so's coming over. And what'd you do? I kind of got a bit of an attitude, if I was going to be honest. You got all grumpy. Yeah. I overwhelmed you. I might have. My pace was so, it all made sense because I was following it in my head, but it was just overwhelming. And I guess I can see that happening when you're in a professional setting and you're trying to share a vision or you're trying to expedite a project or, oh, I've got this great idea. And, And that intensity is so real within you and natural, but overwhelming to the point that People get grumpy and pull away because they can't they can't keep up with you. Wow. But that's what we do. That's what we've taught. Our whole lives we've been taught that when you wake up, hit the <sighs> ground running. Get going. We got a lot to do. And the problem with that is is that there are times where you have to have to walk to the thirst station and get a drink and get your mind back. Breathe a little bit. We talk about that. There's been a study. I just did the study in this week that when we feel anxiety, it actually disassociates our cognitive skills from our brain, our abilities. When we're, when we're all hyped up and full of anxiety, I can't remember the word they said, but it's almost like it kind of shuts down your rational thinking. Well, the emotional section's taking over because you're overwhelmed. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. I guess I never really thought about the detriment of my pace or the how I'm not only wearing out other people, but I'm also wearing out myself. Yourself. Because when you have these intense days and you're going, 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 oh my gosh, I need a nap. <laughs> or I'm just fried. I'm done for the rest of the evening. Hmm. Maybe Maybe a power nap in the middle of the day if your work can afford that. Um, isn't a bad thing. I and, and we we have our paradigms to say, oh, you can't nap during work. I'm not paying you to sleep. Listen, this might be the thing that you need to do to recharge your batteries because we all will hit a trough. And it's usually six or seven hours from the time we wake up, our energy gets drained. We got to do something. Going for a walk is very powerful. Leaving your phone in your office and just enjoying nature. Going for a walk on your your smart device, that's not giving you what you need. So that's my lesson that I learned from running is sometimes slowing down, walking can be so much beneficial, so much more beneficial to get to that end and you'll get there quicker. And you'll win. Wow, isn't that like tortoise and the hare? Which was something that you've talked about. A previous podcast, yes it was. So yeah, it is. And, And so... Challenging your paradigm, uh, but with this paradox of going faster by slowing down. So my friends, whether you're running a race or not, you're living life. So you're a leader, whether you're at your house or whatever work you do, you're a leader. First of all, pay attention to your body. Second of all, have sugar. (laughs) No, here's the lesson on that, okay? Do... Sometimes we have to do what we don't always think is the right thing or the thing that's comfortable to us. So that's the learning lesson from the glucose is that we have to stretch ourselves with some things that we might have thought differently about. It's it's like you're unlearning and relearning. You have to unlearn what was preached and taught to you at probably a younger age to relearn what new research has found. Right. Okay, that's better than eat sugar. So sugar is bad for you. Well, in this particular situation, the glucose is good for you. So you've got to have an open mind. As a leader, we have to have an open mind. But we're so trapped in our brains that we don't look at it from a different perspective. Different perspectives can be beneficial learning lesson. And then the third learning lesson related to our leadership in this world, slow down and then slow down even more so that everybody is on board with you. And then when when it's an appropriate time then you can kick it in the gear and it's usually not initially but and it, 
under certain circumstances. You'll know. You'll, you'll, you'll know. know. You'll know. And when you start getting momentum yeah. and there's a synergy amongst your team, that's when you can cut down two minutes per mile. That's good. Well, if you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share, comment. I appreciate any reviews. Stay tuned for more good stuff, more good learning lessons that happen in our kitchen during breakfast. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.